Hi friends, today I'll be telling you about orthogonal basis, orthonormal basis and Gram-Schmidt process. So what is an orthogonal basis? Suppose we have a set S that contains vectors V1, V2, Vn. Then this set S is said to be an orthogonal set if all of the vectors of S if all of these vectors of S are mutually perpendicular to each other that means Vi dot Vj is zero for every i not equal to j. Then moving ahead this set S is said to be ortho normal set if there are two conditions that are true. First, all the vectors are mutually orthogonal. That means all the vectors are mutually perpendicular to each other. So the first condition is that the set S should be an orthogonal set. So vi dot vj equals to 0 for every i not equal to j. And the second condition says that all of the vectors must be unit vectors. So vi dot vi when I take this should come out to be equal to 1 for every i. So it is evident that an orthonormal set is always an orth orthogonal set but the converse need not be true. So the converse is true only if all of the vectors are unit vectors. Moving ahead I would now like to talk about basis of a vector space so we all know if I have a vector space V then any set B, any subset B of V is said to be a basis for V if there are two conditions that it satisfies. First B is linearly independent. Second B spans V that is V is equals to span B that means that any vector of V can be written as a linear combination of elements of B. So now a basis is called an orthogonal basis if it is an orthogonal set. Similarly a basis is called an orthonormal basis if it is an orthonormal set. Uh, so if I have a vector space V and I'm given an orthogonal basis for B, V, which is V1, V2, Vn. Then if I want to find out coordinates of any vector V with respect to this basis B, then the coordinates are given by V dot V1, V1 dot V1, V dot V2, V2 dot V2 and so on up till V dot Vn, Vn dot Vn. So these are the coordinates of any vector V belonging to V and B is an orthogonal basis. It is important only if B is an orthogonal basis for V then the coordinates of any vector V are given by this formula here. Also now if I take B to be orthonormal okay so if V is any vector space and B is an orthonormal basis for V then we know that in an orthonormal basis Vi dot Vi is 1 so all of these will become 1 so any coordinate any uh, coordinate of any vector v belonging to the vector space v with respect to this orthonormal basis would be v dot v1, v dot v2, v dot vn. Please note that since we are talking about coordinates of any vector with respect to a basis so we have to take an ordered basis and we all know that an ordered basis is a basis in which the order of the vectors appearing in it is fixed. So let us just quickly take up an example to understand this. 
so let us see so now if i have suppose i take v to be r3 okay so i'm taking my vector space to be r3 and i'm taking b to be 1 0 minus 1 minus 1 4 minus 1 2 1 2 so i am taking b to be this now firstly i will show that b is orthogonal basis for r3 okay so i need to show that b is an orthogonal basis for r3 and after that i will find out coordinates of minus 1 5 3 with respect to this orthogonal basis so let us first see how is this an orthogonal basis so since i know that dimension of r3 is 3 and there are three vectors so if i show that this set b is linearly independent then it will automatically be basis for r3 and we know that every orthogonal set is linearly independent so now i will first show that b is an orthogonal set so we know that b will be orthogonal if all the vectors are perpendicular to one another so let us see if i take 1 0 minus 1 i take its dot product with minus 1 4 minus 1 so i what do i get i get 1 into minus 1 which is minus 1 0 into 4 which is 0 and minus 1 into minus 1 which is 1 so we get 0 similarly we can show that 1 0 minus 1 dot product with 2 1 2 is equals to 0 and minus 1 4 minus 1 dot product with 2 1 2 is also 0 so we have to take all the possible combination of vectors and we have to show that all of the vectors are perpendicular to each other so the dot product of vi dot vj is equals to 0 for every i not equal to j so that means that b is orthogonal now that we have shown that b is orthogonal and we know that any orthogonal set is linearly independent so that means that b is linearly independent set of three vectors in r3 and dimension of r3 is equals to 3 so that means that these three vectors will also span r3 that means that b is a basis for r3 so now b is orthogonal we have already shown b is a basis for r3 so that means that b is an orthogonal basis for r3 so we have now shown part one let us move forward to find the coordinates of minus 1 5 3 with respect to this ordered basis so we will be using the formula so i need to find coordinates of minus 1 5 3 with respect to my orthogonal basis b so my formula here this is i've taken this to be v so the formula is v dot v1 v1 dot v1 v dot v2 v2 dot v2 v dot v3 v3 dot v3 so these will be the coordinates of minus 1 5 3 with respect to b so now v1 my vector v1 so dot product of minus 1 so let me just show it to you how did i get this minus 1 5 3 is v dot v1 so v1 i have taken 1 0 minus 1 so dot product of these two if i take it is come let me just write this once again so minus 1 5 3 dot product with 1 0 minus 1 the first vector v1 so this is coming out to be minus 1 plus 0 minus 3 so it, it is coming out to be minus 4 and when i take v1 dot 
v1 so it is 1 0 minus 1 dot 1 0 minus 1 so it is coming out to be 1 plus 0 plus 1 which is coming out to be 2 so this quantity here is coming out to be minus 4 by 2 similarly this is coming out to be 18 by 18 and this is coming out to be 9 by 9. So the coordinates of this point with respect to B are coming out to be minus 2, 1, 1. That is it. This was the question that was asked. Next we move on to Gram-Schmidt process. So let me just quickly tell you when do we use Gram-Schmidt process? So the Gram-Schmidt process basically is used when I'm given a vector space V and I'm given any basis for V or for that matter any linearly independent set is given for V and it is given that V is spanned by that linearly independent set. So ultimately it means that B has to be a basis for V. So if V is any vector space and B is W1, W2, WK then using this B I can get a set S of vectors V1, V2, VK which will be an orthogonal basis for V. So whenever I need to find an orthogonal basis for a given vector space using a basis that is already given, then we apply Gram-Schmidt process. So how do we do it? Let us just focus on the process now. So let me just write it once again. So I'm given a vector space V and I'm given a basis B which is W1, W2, WK. So this is any basis for V and using this I need to find another basis S which is V1, V2, VK such that S is an orthogonal basis for V. So I need to find S. So that means I need to find V1, V2, Vk. So how do we do that? So let, the first step would be to take V1 to be equal to W1. The second step would be to take V2 to be equal to W2 minus W2 dot V1 over V1 dot V1 into V1. So this is dot product. So it will be scalar. This is also dot product, it will be scalar. So this is a scalar multiplication of this vector. So V2 is W2 minus scalar multiple of V1. Okay, and V1 is W1. So it is a recurrence formula. So the second, so V2 is calling V1. Similarly, V3 will call V2, V1. So now, the third step would be V3 is equals to W3 minus W3 dot V1, V1 dot V1, V1 minus W3 dot V2, V2 dot V2, V2. So we continue like this and the kth step would be to find VK which would be WK minus wk dot v1 v1 dot v1 v1 minus wk dot v2 v2 dot v2 v2 and so on minus wk dot vk minus 1 vk minus 1 dot vk minus 1 vk minus 1 so this is the step-by-step -step process to get this orthogonal basis for V and this entire process is called Gram-Schmidt process. So I'll just quickly take up an example so that you understand how to solve it. So let us just take up an example so that you understand Gram-Schmidt. 
process. So let us now take B to be 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 2, 1, 0. So this is B and W is equals to span B. It is given. We need to find orthogonal basis for W. It can be seen that B is not orthogonal because when I take dot product of this and this they are not it is not coming out to be zero so the vectors are not mutually perpendicular so it is not an orthogonal basis so using this I need to find out I need to find out an orthogonal basis for W now let us first see whether B is a basis for W or not so to find out that we need to see it is already given that b is spanning w so b will be a basis for w if b is linearly independent so to check whether b is linearly independent what we do is we construct a matrix a in which we take all of these vectors as columns of a so the first vector will be my first column then similarly the second vector is my second column and the third vector is my third column. After constructing this matrix A, we find its RREF, reduced row Eklund form. The reduced row Eklund form of this matrix is coming out to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So we see that there is a pivot in every column. Now since there is a pivot in every column, that means that B is linearly independent so b is linearly independent also it is given that b is spanning w so that means b is a basis for w but as i said b is not orthogonal why is it not orthogonal because when i take dot product of this and this we are not getting zero so the vectors are not mutually perpendicular so now using gram schmidt process i will get an orthogonal basis for w so i am taking this to be w1 w2 w3 so now the first step would be to so i need to find s which would be b1 v2 v3 so now i need to find b1 v2 and v3 so the first step would be to find v1 so v1 is nothing but w1 so that means that v1 is 2 1 0 minus 1 second step would be to find v2 and v2 would be w2 minus w2 dot v1 v1 dot v1 v1 so i have just calculated this already so i'm just substituting all the values here and finally i'm gonna get so w2 is 1 0 2 minus 1 and upon solving this i'm getting this is coming out to be 3 and this is coming out to be 6 so 3 by 6 v1 so v1 is 2 1 0 minus 1 so ultimately v2 is coming out to be 0 minus half 2 minus half similarly i move on to find v3 so next the last step is to find v3 so v3 is w3 minus w3 dot v1 v1 dot v1 minus w3 dot v2 v2 dot v2 so upon substituting all the values i am getting the answer to be 2 by 3 minus 4 by 3 minus 1 by 3 0 so this is v3 so that means my set s is 2 1 0 minus 1 0 minus half 2 minus half and 2 by 3 minus 4 by 3 minus 1 by 3 0 so this is my orthogonal basis for w so this is how we apply gram schmidt process i hope the process is clear to you if you have any difficulties then please feel free to comment below thank you